So right here I have a PinePhone with NixOS installed on it. The apps here, a little bare bones, but it's pretty awesome because everything is managed through a config file, just like any other NixOS system. So there's only one config file you have to worry about, and you can edit it yourself, apply it, and then go to town with this thing. The old Pine Phone comes down to just three steps. We have to install the Toboot bootloader, we have to install NixOS itself, and then we're gonna go through the steps of configuring NixOS, installing packages, having a little fun with it, all that. In case you're new here, I'm Steve, and this is Page Key where we take back tech because having control of your tech is more and more important in our world. We have to understand our technology and learn how to use it. So to get this job done, we need some special equipment. First of all, you need the Pine Phone itself, and then you'll need a charger. You wanna have it on the charger. I had it at 6% and I was sweating when it was installing because it was going down even though it was plugged in. I think it hovered at 1% once it ran out, but definitely make sure it has a good charge and keep it charging. And we need this guy, which is an SD card converter. So it lets you take this little micro SD card and plug it into your laptop as if it's a USB card. And then of course you need this micro SD, which will hold our operating system that we plug directly into the Pine Phone to boot off of. Optionally, you can have this little guy. It's a SIM card ejector. If your phone uses a little dot like this to eject the SIM card, if you want to try your SIM card out in the Pine Phone. But I'm going to show you what not to do that I did that almost ruined my Pine Phone, and I still can't get the SIM card to be recognized. So I'm going to show you what I did wrong so you don't do it too. And the Pine Phone also came for me with this little SIM card tool. I think it adapts it to the same size as a micro SD card. So Maybe you can use this instead, or I don't know. Before we go any further, I wanna show you what not to do with your SIM card, which mine's all beat up now. You can see that the teeth of my Pine Phone here are a little messed up. I'm gonna keep it upside down so I don't expose any numbers or anything, but basically just make sure when you're putting it in, don't lose it back in here because there's no backing here to stop you from over inserting it and it'll go off to the side or something like that and you won't be able to get your SIM card out. So make sure you don't do that. Be very careful and just put it in just enough to be resting on these pins and maybe you'll still have a working Pine Phone by the end of it. So this inner slot is for the SIM card. The SD card goes over top. So don't try to put it into that lower slot. The SD card goes on top and then you just push it in like that, very easy. The first thing we'll do is install Toboot. So if you click the link number one in the description, it will take you here and you can go to whatever the latest release of Toboot is. Scroll down and it can be kind of hard to tell. Some of these are Pine Book, Pine Book Pro, but we want Pine Phone A64, not Pine Phone Pro. So I'm gonna click this to download it. Once it downloads, you can use the tar command XVF to extract it, or I'm sure you have a built-in way to do it if you open this in your graphical file explorer. And we can see the files inside of it. It turns out this MMC boot installer is what we're going to need. In fact, if you click link number two in the description, you'll see it brings us to this instructions page for Toboot. So we need to run this command. We can do that now and that will flash it to the disk. But before we can run this, we need to insert our SD card, our micro SD card. And before we even do that, you're gonna wanna do something along the lines of sudo dmessage w to keep track of your kernel log if you have permission to do that. And you should see what drive number connects when you insert the SD card. We don't wanna get the wrong one. So keep an eye out, start running this and watch it. And it's good to hit enter a bunch once you start it and then you'll see very clearly when you plug it in. So take that micro SD card, make sure it has nothing on it cause it's gonna get completely erased. And we're gonna take our little USB guy and insert it into the micro SD slot. Then go ahead and insert the USB guy with the SD into your computer. Now that we did that, we can look back at our D message logs here and you'll see SDA was connected. And in my case, it has one and two. I've already burned NixOS to this, but we can do it again. Here is our drive. So if yours is not SDA, don't run commands on SDA. You might end up accidentally overwriting something else. We just plugged this in and then it popped up. So we know that the thing we just plugged in is SDA. If yours is a different name, remember that other name. So now I've CD'd into the same directory of that MMC boot installer thing. And I'm gonna run this as sudo because you need permission if you're gonna overwrite a disk like that. And I'm gonna copy this command. So I'll take the MMC boot guy, 
I'll say OF equals slash dev slash SDA, not SDA1, not SDA2. Don't use a partition number. That messed me up at first. We'll say buffer size of one megabyte. What else do they have here? I'm just gonna take this and paste it. And we'll hit enter. And it just burned toe boot to the SD card. You can go ahead and take out the SD card. Get it in your hand. Now we will open this guy up. One corner has a little notch in it, which should let you very easily just pop open the case. Once you're in there, pull out the battery. Insert the SD card. Put the battery back in the same way. There we go. Put everything back together. And now we can now we can boot it by holding the power key. Toe boot, you'll see a red LED and then a yellow one, and something should pop up. There we go. So now we want to install toe boot to the internal storage so we don't have to boot off of the SD card. Connect to a charger, please do that, but I'm not gonna do that. You hit start. It's a quick process, it turns nice and green. We go back to the menu, you hit power off, and we can move on to the next step. For this next step, pop out the SD card, put it back into the computer. Now, if you click on link number three in the description, you get this Pine64 PinePhone page for mobile Nix OS, and it has instructions. This part threw me off. I could not figure out where to download the installer. If you click builds on installer image, it's going to take you to Hydra, and you can see latest builds, just click the top one. It's actually a failed build, but you can see the last successful build is right here. We'll click that guy. Once that loads, you just have to click this .img file for the PinePhone installer image to download. It might be a little slow because their Hydra server seems to be slow, so give it some time. Now that it's done, we can go back to the instructions again and we can do basically the same procedure, just a slightly different command. So we'll dd, input file is gonna be the mobile Nixos that we just downloaded. The output file will be slash dev slash sda for us. They are assuming that you're connected using jump, jump drive or whatever, which is another way of doing this. We're not gonna get into it right now, but just burn it to sda, no problem. Buffer size, off flag, all this stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in all the options hit enter and then this one actually takes a little bit longer the toe boot image was very small this one could take a couple minutes even because it's several gigabytes to write this nix os installer so let this finish and then we'll continue so full disclosure i had some issues with that latest build that i just downloaded so i'm going back to my notes here and i'm going to grab the one that worked for me earlier before i recorded this video which i'm pretty sure this is what i need installer pine 64 pine phone I'll click through, I'll get this. So I think this is a different build. Fingers crossed that it works this time. Now that that's done, pop out the old SD card and put it into the phone yet again. Reinstall the battery and the back of the phone. And now we can turn this thing on again. But this time it seems to have worked. If I hold the power button, it'll vibrate. And then I can go bottom volume button until it vibrates twice and turns blue. That's how you know it's booting from the SD card. And then you're good to go. So use the link number three in the description. If that link is broken, you might just have to try a few different unstable builds to find the one that works. But we get this mobile NixOS installer. So it's gonna load and then we'll come back. There we go. What a beautiful site, the mobile NixOS installer. So you can continue to the installer connect to a network, and then hit WLAN zero, find your Wi-Fi, type in the password, and then come back. Now that we're connected, we can hit system configuration. I like to turn off full disk encryption. It's probably a good idea to have it, but anyway, I don't feel like messing with it. So type in your username, your name, your username, your password, and then you can give it a host name. And now for environment, you can choose Fosh or Plasma Mobile. I did Fosh and I was very happy with it. So I'm gonna stick with that. And then we can hit proceed to the installation. So if I hit next, it's gonna go ahead and install it. So yeah, let's go ahead and do it.
we'll let that go for probably quite a while. Okay, it's all done. That actually took quite a while, like 20 minutes, maybe more. And now it's successful. So we're going to power down and then we're going to take the SD card out and then we can boot up into the freshly installed Nix OS. As you can see, the SD card is out. So I'm going to hold the power button and turn it on. There it goes. Don't be alarmed by the black screen. You do just have to give it a minute. It'll come back. There we go. We have some stuff loading, a familiar Linux boot screen there. And we're done. We get a, uh, a mobile phone screen here, right? So we can unlock. Don't be fooled by this. This really got me. I was Googling what, what's the passcode? Like, what is the default passcode? Hit the little keyboard button, and now you can type in your password. That would be your passcode. And there we go. I unlocked it, and we're good to go. So I'm going to hit console. And the first thing I'm going to do is go enable SSH so I don't have to type on this little tiny keyboard. And I can use my laptop to log in. So um, also, you should probably just go to Wi-Fi and configure your Wi-Fi again since it forgot it, since this is no longer the installer. But first of all, I'm going to do sudo nano etsy nixos configuration.nix. Now I'm in the file, but I'm going to hit the down arrow to get to the bottom of the file. And then just before the end of the file, I'm going to insert a new line. I'm going to say services.openssh.enable equals true. I'll hit control O to save the file, hit enter, and then control X to get out of there. And now we can do sudo, oops, control key stuck, sudo, oh, okay, console crashed. Let's try again. Sudo nixos rebuild switch, enter my password, and it'll rebuild the system with SSH. In the meantime, definitely go configure your Wi-Fi, get connected, we'll need that. Now that that's done, we can type IP address and look for what shows up for WLAN 0. So I'm not going to show mine. Dot .109 is my IP address. If you do system CTL status SSHD, you can see that it's running on here. So I'm going to put this guy down and we can log in from the laptop. So if we SSH into that IP address that we just had, make sure you specify the username if it's different from the system you're SSHing from. You can say yes, type in your password, and you're in. So now we can much more easily edit the configuration file. So I'm going to go ahead and edit Nixos configuration Nix. Let me go down here and fix the indent and also install a few things. So environment, system packages, equals with packages, start a list. In that list, I'm going to put Vim for, for better editing. Let's, let's start with that. I'll write that file, save it sudo nixos rebuild switch. So that did take a good few minutes to complete, but we don't even have to open a new terminal. We can just write, go ahead and open up Vim on our phone. So we know that it worked, it installed. That's pretty cool. Now, what else can we do? I'll tell you what else we can do. We can use Vim now to go edit that configuration file. And I'm gonna install two more things. Two more things, I'm going to install git, and then I'm going to enable the tail scale service. Save that. Mix house rebuild switch. And we'll give it a few minutes again. Now that that's complete, we have the git command so you can git clone down your Nix files. In the previous video, I showed how to set all of that up with soft links. It's felt like a nice way to do it. I'm sure there's a better way, but check out the previous video on how to do that. So you can add your phone configuration to Git and push it up so that you never lose it. And then the second thing is you now have access to the tail scale command. So it's logged out, but if you do sudo tail scale up, then you can click this link to log into tail scale if you have an account, or you can set one up. It is free and it is awesome. So perfect. I just did that on my account. So now the effect is I can actually log back into my laptop from here, but the SSH server is off for security reasons. But if I log out here, I can SSH into mobile Nixos, which got added to my tail scale network. And I can log into this phone. Big deal, right? But it actually is a big deal because if I leave this phone anywhere, or if the phone is on mobile data, whatever it is, as long as it's connected to the internet, no matter where you are, 
you can log in exactly like this because it's on the tail scale network instead of just your local area network. So I always like to do that for my devices. I think it's a blast. It can't be beat. But that's all I have. So now you have a nice little Pine phone with NixOS on it. Hope this helped out and was a useful tutorial. Consider liking and subscribing if you're into that sort of thing. And if you want to take back tech with me here at PageKey. Thanks a bunch. See ya.